Hello friends. Dr. Johnson, the professor to Shakespeare. This is the third lecture. We have seen the first lecture is our introduction. Second, we saw mainly we focused on the method, that is the comparative method. In nature also you will find that. If you want to judge or if you want to find out which is the highest peak in the world, you have to compare it with others. So exactly like that you have to do this, uh, you have to do that comparison in the world of literature also. So if you want to find out who is the greatest genius, you have to see what are the, what, who are the other geniuses. Whether they are great, greater or greatest. Understand? That. So today we start with the excellences of Shakespeare. And uh, there are faults also we have seen, but uh, uh, that instead of that, you know, this is the best way to begin. You know, start with the excellences, positive things uh, of a person instead of negative. <coughs> because negative would, uh, will be repulsive, but positive will be very attractive, you know, isn't that? So you are now in nature, you have got a phototrophic and phototropic creatures, you know, phototropic and phototrophic. That is, phobia means <coughs> hatred. So there are some creatures and some plants and so on which is photophobic. That is negative. You know, yes. that, in that sense. So we will start with the phototropic, <coughs> this attraction. Now, the first and the foremost excellence of Shakespeare, according to Dr. Johnson, is, is the just representation of human nature. All the plays of Shakespeare are just representations of human nature. Just representations, representations of human nature. Human nature. And here is a famous quotation by Dr. Johnson. It says that Shakespeare is above all writers. At least above all moderns, modern writers, the poet of nature. Shakespeare is above all writers, at least above all modern writers, the poet of nature. You can take that down because it's very important now. Uh, Shakespeare is, Shakespeare is, Shakespeare is, Above all writers, above all writers, at least above all modern writers. So there is again a slight reservation here. Because in ancient, ancient, some of the ancients might excel. So it says, above all modern writers, the poet of nature. See, the poet that holds up to his readers, all modern writers, the poet of, the poet of nature. The poet who holds up to his readers, the poet who holds up to his readers well, a faithful mirror of manners and of life. A faithful mirror of manners and of life. So this is Dr. Johnson. Very important quotation. <clears throat> the first and foremost excellence of Shakespeare is all the plays are just representations of human nature. All the characters are just representations of human nature. And you can support it by his own quotation. He says his own statement, which is our quotation here. Shakespeare is about all writers, at least above all modern writers, the poet of nature, the poet who holds up to his readers 
a faithful faithful mirror yes. a faithful mirror uh, who holds up to his readers a faithful mirror, mirror of sorry a faithful mirror of faithful mirror of of minus and of life so what do you see if you stand before a mirror you see yourself so Shakespeare's place are like that there you you what do you see through the play what do you see in the play is nothing but human nature that's what is it faithful mirror of minus and of life very very important so at least if you can't remember the whole thing and remember at least this he holds up to his readers a faithful mirror of manners and of life. He, Shakespeare, holds up, hold, means hold, keep like this, no? hold in front of him, holds up to his readers a faithful mirror of manners and of life. At least that means you can remember, I think, that's no problem. What other dramatists used to do, you know? They used to gain attention by hypothetical or exaggerated characters. A very good example you will find Christopher Marlowe, Tamburlain the Great, part one and part two, the Jew of Malta. In, in uh, Christopher Marlowe, the, probably we can say the human nature is expressed in uh, Dr. Faustus. Even there, it's not faithful mirror. Because you don't find such characters now. He, he, has, he took it from Foster Smith. That is actually dramatization of Foster Smith. And there you can see supernatural character on Mephistopheles. He comes and signs a, a pact with uh, Dr. Faustus. And the end of the play is also, you know, he's carried away by devils. So those things are not, uh, those things don't happen in our day-to-day -day life. When, you, when we die, no devil comes and they, uh, takes us away. You know? At least we don't see. I don't know whether it is whether who comes there, angel comes there or devil comes there. That I don't know. But uh, visibly we don't feel it. That much I can say. But in Dr. Foster, it is not like that. In Dr. Foster, the supernatural remains supernatural. But in Shakespeare, the supernatural remains level with life. Even the witches, you can say, no? they have got some uh, human nature in them. See, they, their way of talking, addressing, and, and uh, they were, their way of appearance. Appearance may be very clumsy and very <clears throat> exotic, but still, you feel that some old women are talking, are talking to Macbeth and, and Banco. Isn't it? That way we see that. So there is. Even supernatural becomes natural in Shakespeare. So this is something that we have to note. Yes. So in other dramatists gained attention by hypothetical and exaggerated characters. Barbarous romances, giant and dwarfs. Understand? Characters are giants and dwarfs. So, but in Shakespeare, this is very, very important to note. That is, he holds, maybe he is the first of the greatest of English writers. Except maybe Chaucer, because in Chaucer also you find life and manners, but in a different way. Not in a drama, but it's a narrative point, isn't it? It's a narrative point, yes. And he says, you know, we are going to see in the <coughs> Tabardin, when um, about to start the pilgrimage, the host says like this, uh, so we are going to see the manners of people, how they behave and things like that. He, say, he says, but uh, that yeah, it's there, but it cannot be compared to what Shakespeare. Here, what you see is action before you, but the other one is narration. That's the thing. So, the just representation of, of, of human nature, his place and his characters, and his plot story. So, now Shakespeare is above all like this. At least above all modern writers, the poet of nature, the poet who holds up to his readers a faithful mirror of manners and of life. And that he does by, not by introducing dwarfs and, 
Beer is a analogy point, but what do you find is that the characters are not human. Right? Even Beer is a super uh, human hero. Even Beer is a super human hero. So we are attracted by that. The exploits of Beer. And then the <coughs> giant comes, his mother comes, all the terrible accidents, terrible incidents. You know, the shoulder is pulled out, so they pulled down, so to say, so to say yes. and separated from the body. Such a horrible uh, uh, scenes are uh, presented, and that, this is how the audience is attracted to his attractor, or they, or they have become repressive. I don't know what is your thing. So they have spoken about it. His scenes are occupied by men who act and speak. That's very important. His scenes are occupied by men who act and speak as the reader thinks. I think and you think. That is. So that is another point you can note down here. So here this quotation is a very valid quotation and it's a very strong quotation. Because examination purpose, you know, when you are answering a question on excellences of Shakespeare, this is really a key, I must say. That will open the secret of uh, the excellence of Shakespeare. I think that you have learned that. And now, when the second point you notice that, his scenes are occupied by men who act and speak like the reader. You feel empathy. You feel like placing yourself in that place. That's the thing. That he would himself have spoken or acted on the same occasion. You would also act in the same way. You would also speak in the same way if such a thing would have happened in your life. So this point, please note, scenes are occupied by men. Scenes are occupied by men. Scenes are occupied, occupied by men who speak and act. Act like you. That is the reader, like you. See? So, in the same situation, you would also do the, you would also do the same thing. See? Think of uh, Othello. And uh, with the drawn sword, they go to attack. Then the master fighter, the general, the experienced, the uh, general the, who has masterminded many battles, what does he say? <coughs> Calm and God is it. Keep up your bright swords for the dew will rust. Don't rush at me with your drawn swords. Otherwise, what will happen? He says, See, what if, what if uh, T.S. Eliot has commented on this line the most perfect imaginative. A uh, line that Shakespeare has ever written. So keep up your bright swords for the dew will last. How many meanings, in how many ways you can interpret that. So if you are Othello, such a situation comes, you will also do the same. That is the, <coughs> that's what is meant by saying his, his, uh, one of his excellences is mirror, holding a mirror, faithful mirror of minus and of life. So, would he not speak like Shylock in the courtroom when he was attacked by the anti-Semitic feelings of Christians? He's asking, he says, no. Your blood, the blood that is running through your vein and the blood through, that is running through my vein are the same. Is it not the same? Exact, these are not the exact words, but this, he would react in the same. When his daughter Jessica, Jessica, Jessica eloped with uh, Lorenzo, he cried out, my ducats, my daughter, my ducats, my daughter. I repeated these. Anybody, any miser would do the same thing. If I were a miser, I would do the same thing. You were a miser, you would do the same thing. So his characters speak and act as 
we do on the same occasion. Even his supernatural scenes, that's what I told you. His dialogue is level with life. When you see the ghost in the Hamlet, see, suppose it is not written ghost, you will think that it is some human being is speaking. Isn't it? Said, Martin, to be near, see? that I have to go. See? Adieu, adieu, that is bye bye. Like any human being. Speaking about the globum and so on. So, that's very important. That is, scenes are occupied with men and women. Very few women characters. That's why I did not stress on that. And even, you know, those actors, uh, women characters, they were boys. Uh, they were, uh, you know that is now, they were uh, putting on the dress of, or the dress and the paraphernalia of girls or uh, women. So spoken, acted or same occasion. He, as a, again another point is, even his supernatural characters, look at that, supernatural characters, supernatural scenes and characters level with the nature. Level with nature. You can give examples of the ghost scene in Hamlet. You can see the conversation or between Macbeth and the, the witches. You can give examples like that. So, so you can give even the example of the Bangor's ghost. Speaks like a human. So that's Shakespeare approximates the remote and familiarizes the wonderful. Very important. Approximate the remote. Supernatural is remote, far away. But you see they are human beings. They look like human beings. And familiarizes the wonderful. See? And then what happens is the event will not happen. But if it happens, the event will not happen. But if it happens, the effect will be the same as he has shown. Look at all the events. See that? Now, Hamlet trying to take revenge upon his uncle. What else a student can do? The mighty king, supported by his own mother. People, the critics, many critics have blamed Hamlet for his procrastination. But what else can you do? Suppose you are a student in a university and you come to know about such a situation. You come immediately. Can you catch hold of Claudius and the killing? He says, no, he is protected. He is supported by his mother. Other lost jealousy for us. See that? Third day, uh, that is anybody. Could be the same, would act in the same way. And also we can see, we, you saw now this um, Othello is the most vigorous and vivacious offspring of observation. That is what he said. But that is what is uh, Dr. Johnson says about Othello is the most vigorous and vivacious uh, object of his observation. I'm uh, sorry, offspring of his observation, he said. Impregnated by his genius. Oh. This sentence I have taken, broadly lifted from the preface. So, Othello is the most vigorous and vivacious of offspring of observation impregnated by the, by genius. I will write it on the board, it's good to know. Othello is, Othello is the most vigorous and vivacious offspring offspring means child offspring the most vivacious and the, sorry the law is the most vigorous and vivacious offspring of observation observation impregnated 
impregnated with his genius. Hi, beautiful sentence. Very beautiful. <coughs> he must uh, learn such sentences. So, Adalla is the most vigorous and vivacious offspring of observation impregnated by with his genius. So, it's human. Any human being in such a situation will act like that. You and I, even in this so called modern age where psychology has so much advanced, you know the mysteries of mind, but still. You read in the newspapers. See, a husband cut the wife into seven pieces, like we cut fish, <laughs> and then deposit in seven different places, or eight different places. For what we don't know, but then. But in, uh, uh, yes, there is also a Husband, wife killing husband in Shakespeare, no? partial help. That is the truth. Killing her husband with the help of husband's brother. It's also there. In Hamlet. These are observations of life. Understand? This, therefore, is the praise of Shakespeare. What? Just representation of nature. Characters like you and the items speak like you and they would do, they would react in the, in the same way as we would react. They reacted in the same way as we would have reacted. So the therefore, the praise of Shakespeare is praise of Shakespeare. His drama is the mirror of life. Once again, his drama is the mirror of life. Understand? The event will happen, and but if it happens, the event will not happen. What do you see? For example, Macbeth killing his king, Duncan. Such things will not happen. But if such a thing happens, what will happen? The effect will be the same. Vaulting ambition, supported by his wife. Very normal, isn't it? That that is guarded by by his way, and the mind of Macbeth so innocent, but it is uh, something like that is Adam and mild mild. <laughs> don't 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 fight with me when I compare this because mildly it is like that. Most of the as it is said, no, behind every great man there is a there is his wife, there is a great woman as. That is his wife, like that. Behind every bad man also, there can be uh, the influence of his wife. Normal human behavior. So that is what you find here. Understand? So Shakespeare approximates the remote. Very important. Far away things, like murder of a king by his general. This. Normally, it won't happen. I see a deserter father in King Lear. So, such things normally won't happen, but approximates the remote. And if it happens, surely the, the reaction will be the same. So, this is a very important point that just representation of life holds a mirror, a faithful mirror, holds a faithful mirror of manners and of life to his audience. Characters, normal, not dance, not dwarfs. Even supernatural is, look, supernatural looks like natural. Then the characters, they behave like you and me, like any other, like the audience. So therefore we say that. And he says, Othello comes in for special praise, impregnated with his genius, offspring of his, of, offspring of his observation. Most vigorous and 
Other than vigorous and vivacious of his observation. So he might have seen or some such things may have happened within his orbit of experience. Such things might have happened. So that is the result. He showed life in its native colors. The only exception maybe you can say is chops. The Matalan form original is not copied from India. Matalan form original. Native colors. Native colors means life as it is, as he found in the metropolis or the suburbs or in the countryside. The clowns in his clowns. False stuff, for example. He is everything for everyone. False stuff. See, the garling of Malvoli. Then you find the, the fight among the actors in Midsummer Night's Dream, bottom. Say that I will act, I will do everything. I will be the hero, I will be the heroine, I will cut over. So that is one man show. And the love scenes. The, the comedies of Shakespeare. And again, it is quite natural you know, mingled drama. When uh, critics they find fault with mingled drama, mingled that is tragic comedy, it's natural. There's no life, there's, uh, there's only tragedy, or there is only misfortune, and there's no life where there is only happiness. Happiness and uh, and, uh, uh, sad events are mingled. So, tragic, please. Another example for is just the representation of human nature. Native colors. So, tragic comedy can say another point. Tragic comedy. Of course, we will be speaking about this later. Tragic comedy is again this point, just the representation of human nature. Now, since uh, Shakespeare has done this, he has act, attracted the censure of critics. Critics. See, for example, Voltaire asks, Voltaire, he praises the tragedy of Cato. And then he asks, those people who have seen the tragedy of Cato, how can they, how can they sit in the theater and watch the tragedies of Shakespeare? That's what, that's what he has asked. But what happens is, in tragedy of cattle, there's nothing that acquaints us with human sentiments or human actions. It's much above. It's a perfect drama, I guess. But no human sentiments? No. See, that's the point. When you consider, you know, a correct and regular drama, suppose a correct and a Cornelius, for example, is a garden. Shakespeare's is a forest. Comparative method. Johnson uses the comparative method. If you consider a correct and regular place, you can call them a garden, a well trimmed and so on. But Shakespeare's is a forest. With all the magnificent splendor and varieties that you find in a forest. Garden is man-made, but forest is nature-made. Did you get that point? Yes. Then what happens is that he says, if regular drama is a cabinet of precious rarities, precious stones, Shakespeare opens a mine which contains gold and diamonds in unexhaustible plenty. Comparative. One is a cabinet, a box of rare things. But here it is a gold, a mine. And the mine contains what? Opens a mine. Gold, diamond, jewels. And that is how in unexhaustible plenty. Go on take, taking it, refill, recharging in our today's time. You cannot empty it 
the cabinet will be, the mind will be recharged again and again with Shakespeare's characters. Do you know that? He wrote that? Shakespeare shows plainly that he has, what he has known, with, what he has seen with his own eyes. He has seen so undoubted and perpetual excellence. What he has seen, the life in the metropolis, the life in the courts, kings, historical place, Shakespeare's Henry place, the life in the courts, see that? And then the money lender, the lovers, the romances, what he has seen. So his scenes of undoubted and perpetual excellence he has. He scripted like that. And uh, essence. Dennis and Reimer, a critic, two critics, he says, his famous, his romance are not sufficiently romance. He is an example of uh, some many news. Many news Agrippa in Coriolanus. He is, he acts as a buffoon, he says. Menenius Agrippa is a senator, but he plays senator of Rome, he plays as a buffoon. Because, again, this is the same point. Even kings can be buffoons. Senators can be buffoons. That is natural. The other one is a garden or a cabinet of rarities. Romances. is that. He, he, his kings are he, he, kings are not at all royal. This. And it was Dennis who said, many years acting as a buffoon. Walter said, he violated decency. When the Danish usurper is represented as a drunkard, who is the Danish usurper? Claudius, the uncle of Hamlet. He is a drunkard. So Walter says that he has offended he has offended or violated decencies. The king is drinking. Many kings drink. Many people drink. But Shakespeare always make nature predominate over accident. That is the thing. Shakespeare. For example, Ulysses. Ulysses could have avoided going to the Senate on the Ides of March. But, but uh, what is his... Uh, what, what is his belief? What is his conviction? Cowards die many times, but valiant dies only once. So how could you resist going to the Senate that day? Even if he knew, because the soothsayer had warned him. And even when he was going, he made, he cracked a joke or a, a pleasantry, exchanged a pleasantry with the soothsayer. And then the Sur says, sir, I see, sir, I so much has come, but it has not, it is not over. And by the time the Ides of March uh, was over, the Caesar had become a dead body, a cadaver. <laughs> That's what happened. He could have, but the nature, his real nature is to surmount difficulties, not run away from difficulties. So he has to be. That's what it is. But Shakespeare always makes nature predominate accident. His stories requires common things. But what of that? But he thinks only of man. His stories might require kings and queens and princes, but according to them, according to Shakespeare, they are of humans. They may they may drink, or they may uh, play the part of a buffoon, or act as a buffoon. My name is Agrippa in Coriolanus. Shakespeare's name. Julius Caesar, Claudius in. Uh, in Hamlet, and Hamlet himself. See? And therefore he says, 
according to we can conclude like this today that is the first the major the most important point is his place a just representations of nature the means characters of or human beings the act and thing like you and me the events that might be that might have been that might be presented on the stage may not happen but if it happens the reaction of you and me will be the same and he gives the example of othello since even his supernatural scenes they approximate nature they are level with nature supernatural characters speak like humans what he has seen with his own eyes he has presented the only exception the only poet who might claim a bit of superiority over shakespeare is chaucer but then that is narration this is action there is a big difference between the two Voltaire Dennis and Rhyme they criticized him for this he said romans are not uh, uh, wrong sufficiently romans kings are not sufficiently kings royal then a senator is is, is playing the part of a fool a buffoon a king is a drunkard this thing he doesn't bother he says whatever they are i use i have characters of all sorts but they are of human beings that's why this representation of human life his place they are a forest when compared to a regular place of cornell perfect place of cornell called their garden this is forest with all the magnificence of a forest variety of a forest. see and then if you consider their place a cabinet of precious rarities six species in a mine where you have gold diamonds jewels and you cannot exhaust it one observation so a towering genius of 18th century whose name is used to describe that age age of dr jones i hope that we feel very vigorous now when we read this passage we feel uh, that we also have been transported to the level of the characters on the stage we feel that we are fully participating in the inexhaustible genius of william shakespeare so that is the genius of dr jones i hope that you are you have been enjoying my classes you are following also remember i told you about that that quotation the quotation you should not forget at least part of it you should not forget holding a mirror up to mirror of minds and the lives holding holds up to his readers to his audit audience a mirror a faithful mirror underline faithful i just mean a faithful mirror so that is holds a faithful mirror holds a faithful mirror so in a, in a way you can say if you define sublime according to lanjenes according to lanjenes sublime is something that will transport you to a different level i think this professor shakespeare is a sublime work of art because as you read If if you read the original, you know, definitely you will be transported to the age of Shakespeare, from age of Doctor Jones. So, we'll I will appear before you again with the, the three or four more points.
Let's go first to Shakespeare's characters. And then we have the mingled drama. And we have uh, the faults of Shakespeare. These things we will see later. Till then, bye. Have a nice time. Please read the original. Hoping that you will do that. Bye. Enjoy your life.